The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from New York City and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Well, guess what, friends? On the way over here to the studio, a guy rushed up to me and said, Gosh, I'm glad you're going back on the air. Why, I haven't eaten anything for breakfast since you stopped telling me what to have. <laughs> well, I hope the rest of you haven't been going without breakfast all summer because it just so happens that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That's what the nutrition experts tell us. And they also say that an adequate breakfast should include a cereal with whole grain nourishment. Well, delicious, molly rich grape nuts or toasty brown grape nuts flakes are certainly the answer to that. For both of these tempting sweet as a nut cereals are chock full of whole grain food values. One kind of nourishment you need to get a swell start on the day. Yes, sir, grape nuts and grape nuts flakes have a real standby equality, and you'll find yourself zipping through to lunchtime in a high when you feature these grand cereals in your morning meal. They're delicious, nutritious, thrifty. So make it grape nuts or grape nuts flakes for a good morning all morning long. gentlemen, as you probably know, Jack Benny has just returned from a camp tour overseas. So we take you back a few days to LaGuardia Airport and show you what happened when Jack arrived. Say, Mary, isn't it crowded here at the airport? It sure is, Don. <laughs> Gee whiz, Don, just imagine, Jack's been gone three whole months. That's right. I wonder if he's changed. Jeepers, I hope so. <laughs> Gosh, I can hardly wait to see him. Oh, you never can tell, Mary. Maybe a trip like this made a new man out of Jack. Maybe. Maybe he'll have a different outlook on life, not worry about everything the way he used to. Maybe. Maybe he won't be so cheap and tight anymore. Well, it was nice thinking about it anyway. <laughs> Let's see if we can push in a little closer, Don. You see, Blossom, I told you there'd be excitement at the airport. Sure, I think, but why is there such a crowd here? Don't you know, Jack Benny's coming in. Who? Jack Benny. Who? You know the comedian who's been with the soldiers in Africa. Oh, Bob Hope, he's so comical. <laughs> No, 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 Jack Benny. He's on the radio Sunday night. For him, they make making such a mishmash. <laughs> With a crowd like this, you'd expect at least Franklin D. Sinatra. <laughs> hey, look, look, look. It's coming in an airplane. Pilot to control tower. Pilot to control tower. Coming in for a landing. Mr. Benny, you can take your head out of my lap now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gee, I, I can't believe I'm home. Pilot to control tower. Pilot to control. Oh, is that you, Mert? <laughs> well, how's every little thing, Mert? I'll speak to you later. Pilot to control tower. Control tower to pilot. Control tower to pilot. Go ahead. Pilot to control tower. Give landing instructions. Give landing instructions. Sorry, we're not allowed to give out that kind of information. <laughs> oh, boy. New York. Look at that skyline. I'm so nervous. Look. Look, there's the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty. Don't get conceited. She waves at everybody. <laughs> Gosh, it'll, it'll only be a couple of minutes now. All right, 
folks. This is it. Watch your step getting out of the plane. Well, so long, Cap. It was a wonderful trip. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hey, look at that beautiful dame. Isn't that Mary Livingston? Yeah, but don't get conceited. She waves at everybody. <laughs> oh, boy, did I get even with that guy. Hey, Mary! Mary, Don! There he is, Don. Jack! Jack! Right with you, kids. Oh, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. May I have your autograph, please? Uh, just a second, ma'am. I want to run over and kiss Mary. Kiss me and give her the autograph. <laughs> that, uh, that's very sweet, ma'am, but I'll come back and kiss you later. Well, hurry up. I'm in 1A. <laughs> I will. Here I am, Don. Hiya, Don. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Jack, how are you? Well, wait a minute. Give me a kiss first. Don, that trip did do him a lot of good. <laughs> why, why, Mary, have I changed? Changed? I haven't been kissed like that since I tripped and fell on a mop. <laughs> That's me, a Casanova from Casablanca. <laughs> hey, where's Rochester? He's at the hotel waiting for you. Pardon me, Mr. Benny, but would you please sign my wife's autograph book? Why, certainly. I'll be glad to. What's the name, please? Just put down, to blossom wrap apart from Jack Benny. Uh, how do you spell that? <laughs> B-E-N-N-Y. <laughs> hmm. You see, Irving, when you get intimate with them, they're not so much. <laughs> Look, lady, suppose I just sign it to Blossom from Jack. Sign anything. Stop wasting my time out of there. <laughs> there you are. Hurry, Jack. Don's waiting in the taxi. Here, Here I, I am, Jack. I got a cab. Right with you. <laughs> Boy, I'll be glad to get to my hotel. Where to, mister? The Acme Plaza. It's uh, way downtown. Oh, Jack, why do you always stay at that joint? Mary, the Acme Plaza is not a joint. Go on, it's the only foxhole I ever saw with a lobby. <laughs> well, I like it. Hey, driver, will you please hurry to the hotel? I've been on a long trip and I want to take a bath. Don't worry, bud. I'll get you there so fast you'll be first in line. <laughs> okay, step on it. Well, tell me, Jack, don't you feel tired and worn out after that long trip? Oh, a little, Don, but it was worth it. Gosh, the places I've been and the people I've met. Sit back, Don. Here it comes. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'll never forget what happened to me in North Africa. You see, Larry Adler was with me and Winnie Shaw and Anna Lee. And we... Say, uh, you're Jack Benny, aren't you? Well, yes, yes, driver, I am. Well, anyway, kids, Larry and I and the girls were at a certain camp in North Africa. It was very quiet. When all of a sudden, about 12 o'clock... Say, night... Mr. Benny, I got a brother in the army in North Africa. Name's Crowley, Joe Crowley. Did you run into him there? Crowley? No, no, I didn't. Well, anyway, down it was midnight, see, and there was a full moon, see? And, of course, no one ever thought that... Funny, Joe's the kind of a guy you'd pick out any place. <laughs> well, look, and I'm sorry, driver, but I didn't see him. So, Mary, get this. Here it was midnight, you see, and nobody was... Cracks his knuckles a lot. Funny you didn't hear him. <laughs> Look, driver, I traveled 32,000 miles. I was all over North Africa. I met thousands and thousands of soldiers. But Joe's a corporal. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I didn't see him. Now, let's see, where was I? It was midnight and Joe was a corporal. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, anyway, it was midnight. There wasn't a breath of air stirring. When all of a sudden... Here we are, the Acme Plaza. This is it, Don. The good old Acme Plaza. Where? Right down those stairs. <laughs> yep, that's it. I'll take care of the cab. Here you are, driver. Uh, 75 piastres. That's Egyptian money. Piastres? They're no good here. Oh, yes. Well, Don, you take care of it, will you? I've only got piastres. <laughs> Holy smoke. Now we're in for six months of this. Mary, I'll get a change at the bank tomorrow. Don't worry. Well, so long, Mr. Penny. 
I'm sorry it didn't make my brother, Corporal Crowley. Yes, yes, so am I. Jack, look who's waiting for you. Where? Boss! 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 Rochester! <laughs> Rochester, am I glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, boss. Doggone, look at you. You got fat. Well, you put on a little weight yourself. You must have gained 20 pounds. I ain't worried. You'll take it off of me. <laughs> no, no, this year things are going to be different. But no kidding, Rochester, we're both carrying around a little excess baggage. I'm carrying mine, boss. You're dragging yours. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't look that bad. Well, come on, kids. Let's go into the hotel. Watch your step. That first one down is a lily. Welcome to Inner Sanctum. <laughs> well, the same old clerk. Hello, Mr. Leroy. Hello, Mr. Benny. Glad to see you home again. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, wonderful. By the way, Mr. Leroy, have I got my same room? No, I moved you up to the ground floor, the penthouse. <laughs> oh, that's swell Yeah, now you won't have to come in through the grating Yeah, it's nice of you, Mr. Leroy Here's the key to your room, Mr. Benny Thank you And here's the other key <laughs> Oh, yes You remember, I always like to lock my clothes closet Well, come on, kids You know, Mary, I can't wait to tell you what happened that night in North Africa It was midnight, and there was a full moon not a breath of air was stirring and everything was quiet when all of a sudden... Well, anyway, Mary, to make a long story short, that's how it happened. Can you imagine her mistaking me for Eisenhower? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine. I'll try. Hmm. Well, anyway... You want me to try too, boss? <laughs> no, Rochester, just finish unpacking my bag. Anyway, Don, it was such a thrill meeting everybody that you've ever read about. All those important generals. Well, I could just sit here and talk for days. Oh, uh, it must have been exciting. But tell me, Jack, how was Eisenhower to talk to? What sort of a fella is he? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Don, he's one general that I didn't get to meet. You see, the two days that I was in Algiers, Eisenhower happened to be in Sicily. You see? Then what about General Doolittle? Did you meet him? No. <laughs> You see, Mary, by the time I got to Sicily, Doolittle had gone to Casablanca. But General Patton was in Sicily. General, General Patton? Patton? Yes, he was in Palermo the same time I was. What a swell guy. Old blood and guts. <laughs> oh, I really was a thrill sitting in his office. Then you met General Patton. No, he had just left for Messina. <laughs> You see, he went, he went from Palermo to Messina. Well, what about General Clark? He went from Natchez to Mobile. <laughs> he did not. He was in Italy when I did a show there two weeks ago. In fact, he would have come to see it if he hadn't been so busy. Oh, then you didn't meet General Clark. He didn't even meet Corporal Crowley. <laughs> That's enough about me. Hey, how's everything at Rome? Roche at home, I mean. Rochester. <laughs> I can't get out of Italy. <laughs> Rochester, how's our border, Mr. Billingsley? Boss, you're sure going to have to get rid of him. That man's getting crazier every day. Why? What happened now? Well, when you were in the Middle East, Mr. Billingsley wrote you a letter. Well, what's crazy about that? Instead of mailing it, he put the letter in his pocket, stuck a stamp on his nose, and shoved his head in the mailbox. <laughs> oh. He told me he would have gone female, but he don't photograph well. <laughs> oh, Rochester, he's just a little eccentric, that's all. 
Imagine mailing him, himself to me as a letter. That ain't the end of it. He shoved me in his filing cabinet and said he wanted to keep a carbon copy. <laughs> Well, don't worry about it, Rochester. Say, Mary, how come you never answered any of those letters I wrote you? Letters? What are you talking about? I never even got a postcard. I didn't either. Well, how do you like that? I wrote two or three times a week. I can't understand it. Did you send them air mail? No. Well, then, did you send them regular mail by boat? No. Don't tell me you gave them to Eleanor as she passed by. <laughs> Mrs. Roosevelt went to Australia. Here's what I did, Mary. You see... There's a current in the Mediterranean that goes into the Gulf Stream, which flows around the tip of Florida and then northward to New York. So? Well, I wrote the letters, put them in bottles, threw them into the Mediterranean, and I can't understand what held them up. <laughs> well, I'll be... I can't... Rochester, where are you going? Back in the filing cabinet. Billingsley's okay. <laughs> you come here. Now, Mary, that might sound ridiculous to you, but if you could only see... Come in! <laughs> now, Mary, if you could only... Hey, Phil! Hiya, Jackson. What do you hear from the pyramid? Well, hello, Phil. <laughs> Phil, am I happy to see you. Gee, you look swell. I feel like a million bucks, Jackson. I feel like a million bucks myself. Yes, sir. Mr. Morgan thought I was going to change that to piastres. <laughs> Who cares? Hey, Jackson, I sure wish I could have gone with you on that trip. Say, uh, did you get to meet General Montgomery? Did I? No. <laughs> Mary, I only missed Patton by 45 minutes. Good old blood and guts. <laughs> well, tell me something, Jackson. Where'd you go? I mean, uh, what countries were you in? Oh, I was in Egypt, Palestine, Sicily, Persia. That's now called Iran. You know, Persia's called Iran. Let's see, where else? Hey, that reminds me, Jackson. You know, I tried to phone you when you were in Iran. Phone me? Yeah, I put in a Persian to Persian call. <laughs> oh, Harris, you're a fool, you boy. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Wait till I tell Alice the kid about this. The kid will punch you right in the nose. But say, fellas, I brought you all some wonderful presents. I'll give them to you later. And listen to this. What do you think I have coming in by boat? Corporal Crowley. <laughs> oh, stop with Corporal Crowley. Well, then what is it, Jackson? A camel. No kidding, fellas, a real live camel. He's being shipped to Hollywood. For heaven's sake, Jack, what do you want with a camel? Why, they're marvelous animals. They can work for you. You can ride them. They don't eat much. And you know, fellas... A camel can go eight days without a drink. Chum, that takes willpower. <laughs> Phil, I'm talking about water. Eight days without water. Well, I can do that. I know, Phil, you've got a lot of talent. <laughs> but incidentally, kids... <laughs> incidentally, kids, when I was in Libya... Um, come in! Uh, when I was in Libya... Hello, everybody. Dana! Oh, How are you, anyway? Thanks. How's Mary? <laughs> oh, she's... Here she is, right here. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hmm. Boy, I just had a big dinner. Am I full? You are, eh? Yeah. Say, how is everybody? Oh, I'm swell, Dennis. Never felt better in my life. Yes, sir. Well, what'd you do this summer, kid? Oh, I managed to keep busy helping out and everything. Well, did you go anywhere this summer, Mr. Benny? <laughs> well, I'll be... Dennis, I was all over Africa doing shows. Oh, vaudeville. <laughs> yeah, that's where it went. Say, Dennis, you're living in this hotel, aren't you? Yeah, and it's sure nice here. They gave me a swell room with an adjoining. <laughs> an, adjoin an adjoining what? I don't know. I can't get the door open. <laughs> well, why don't you go upstairs and complain to the desk clerk? Anyway, Dennis, uh, tell me something about yourself. I haven't seen you in three months. Well, I have a surprise for you, Mr. Benny. 
I might get married. Married? Why, dead as I am surprised. How will you two live on what Mr. Benny pays you? Oh, she earns twice as much as I do. She's a sergeant. <laughs> Listen, you're doing all right. Gee, I'm so nervous about getting married, I don't know what to do. Well, maybe I can help, Dennis. Does your girl need a trousseau? Oh, she's got one already. Full field equipment and a 30-pound pack. <laughs> well, I'll be... A... Say, Dennis, how about singing a song for us? I haven't heard you since our last broadcast. Yeah, come on, Dennis. What do you Let's say? Won't you come on and sing a song for us, Dennis? Full field equipment and a 30-pound pack. to hear his voice. Dennis, that was wonderful. Well, kids, I've waited long enough. I'm going to give you your presents Oh, now. Jack, before you do, there's one more question that I want to ask you about your trip. Uh, you know, about the soldiers overseas. The soldiers? What, uh, what is it, Don? Well, uh, well, oh, I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask me. No, no, never mind. I'll ask you later. Oh, Mary, leave the room a moment, will you, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Should I go, too? No, no, Dennis, you can stay Hot diggity <laughs> Go ahead, Don, what is it about the soldiers? Uh, well, uh, do they eat grape nuts and grape nuts flakes over there? Mary, you can come back now <laughs> In answer to your question, Don, yes Every well-stocked oasis has them you know? Well, I I'm glad they do because grape nuts and grape nuts flakes uh -huh. Both have a sweet-as-a-nut, malty-rich flavor <laughs> Dennis! No use waiting. I gotta have a talk with that kid. With a... Well, when you do, Jack, be sure to tell him that Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes brings you that one distinctive flavor in two delicious forms. I certainly will. Dennis, see me later and bring some sugar and cream, will you? Anyway, kids, I started to say I'm gonna give you your presents now. Rochester, have you got all the gifts unpacked? I got them right here, boss. Say, what's this bag of sand? Is that from the Sahara? Yes, that's from Miss Livingston. It's an hourglass, but the glass broke. You know? <laughs> now I don't know what to do with the sand. Oh, just get me a pail and shovel. I'll play in it. 
Oh, oh, quiet. Rochester, there's a present for you there, too, right at the bottom. I hope the glass didn't break on that one. <laughs> Rochester, it's nothing to drink. It's a fez. A fez. Now, Dennis... A fez? What's that? It's a red silk hat with a tassel. Oh, boss, calm down. <laughs> You'll like it. Now, Dennis... Yes, please? Uh, Dennis, your, uh, your gift is coming by bow. Thanks. That's just what I've always wanted. <laughs> You don't even know what it is. Now, Don. Yes, Jack. Uh, your present is also coming by boat. Yeah, the new writers couldn't think of a gag here. <laughs> Mary, will you please stop? Say, Mr. Benny, if you went overseas, why didn't you write me a letter? Dennis, he wrote us all letters. Wait till I tell you why we didn't get them. Mary, forget about that, will you? He put the letters in bottles and threw them into the ocean. Oh, that's silly. Isn't it, Miss Livingston? <laughs> Silly. It's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Come in. Mary, it's not ridiculous. Rochester, see who's at the door. Okay. <laughs> Imagine using the Mediterranean as a mailbox. Mary. I'll never get over that. Mary, I don't want to hear any more about it. Oh, boss, boss. What is it, Rochester? There's a swordfish here with a special delivery for Miss Livingston. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, I told you, Mary. I know what I'm doing every day of the week. What are you talking about? Friends, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Now, don't tell a soul, but uh, I like to eat. I like things that taste good. So when I say grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are grand eating, I'm not kidding. They have a real zesty flavor, nothing namby-pamby about them. That grape nuts flavor is malty, rich, and just as sweet as a nut. A grand two-grain blend of sun-ripened wheat and malted barley. Grape nuts brings you this luscious flavor in crisp, crunchy kernels. Grape Nuts Flakes brings you the same rich goodness in toasty brown flake form. And both are basic seven foods. For both Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes provide whole grain nourishment. And such cereals are featured in Uncle Sam's Basic Seven Nutrition Program. So when you treat your family to Grape Nuts or Grape Nuts Flakes at breakfast, you're doing them a double favor. Giving them a dish that tastes like a million and providing them with real all-around nourishment. So how about it? Better get some tomorrow. Grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are thrifty, plentiful, not rationed. So you see, kids, there's not much more I can tell you about the trip. Got a lot of boys over there doing a swell job, and they're going to stay till it's finished. But naturally, they, they want to get home, you know. Well, I can, I can understand that, Jack. So listen, kids, the thing to do is just because a third war bond drive is over, let's not slow down, that's all. Keep buying them. Keep buying bonds. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as this is the opening of a new season... I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my new writer. Corporal Crowley. Oh, keep still. <laughs> Good night, folks. Corporal Crowley. Make a note. Your favorite dramatic program, Those We Love, has changed time. It now comes to you early Sunday afternoon over most of these same stations. Look it up in your local newspaper. That's Those We Love. We. It's fall, and it's hot grape nuts wheat meal weather, Mother. Mmm, for that rich, smooth, luscious wheat meal texture. And mmm, for that glorious roasted whole wheat flavor. It's the rich brown whole grain hot cereal member of the famous grape nuts family. Grape nuts wheat meal cooks to perfection in just three minutes. Whee! Hot grape nuts wheat meal. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.